Well, we're talking with uh, Guri Weinberg, the uh, son of the slain Israeli wrestling coach, Moshe Weinberg, who was uh, killed along with 10, over, 10 other Israelis by Palestinian terrorists at the Munich Olympic Games in 1972. Uh, thank you very much for taking some time to speak with us, Guri. Uh, thank you. You've written very powerfully about uh, in a rather amazing and deeply disturbing meeting the families had with IOC officials at the Atlanta Games. Could you tell us a little bit about what happened at that meeting? What did the families ask and what was the response? Well, uh, we've uh, always asked for one thing, and that's a moment of silence at the opening ceremony to remind people of what happened to actual Olympians. Uh, it wasn't just any ordinary terrorist act that happened at the Olympics. So we were told that we were going to meet with Alex Giladi, who's an Israeli, um, who's an official at the IOC. And it was the first time that he was actually involved, so we were feeling very hopeful that we were going to get good news. We sat in that meeting at a hotel conference room, and um, he pretty much right off the bat told us that uh, there was not going to be a moment of silence when we asked why. He said, well, if we have to do it for the Israeli athletes, we're going to have to do it for the Palestinians as well. My mother said, you know, but there were no Palestinian athletes that were murdered at the Olympics. He goes, well, there were Palestinians who died there. I was in so much shock that I, I, I don't remember if it was Anki or Ilana who said this because I was looking at Mr. Gilladi, and uh, one of them said, are you, are you equating the uh, murder of my husband to the terrorists who killed them? And he wouldn't answer. He just sat there cold and wouldn't answer. Ilana Romano then, I mean, started crying. I mean, I remember when I looked at her, I remember when I was a kid looking at, mag at newspaper clips of her pictures at the airport when her husband came back in a coffin, a coffin. And, um, and it almost looked exactly the same to me. And she started screaming at him, how dare you, you know what they did, you know, how dare you equate my husband's uh, murder to, to his murderers, you know what they did to him, they castrated him, they, they embarrassed him, they let him lay there for, for hours dying from his gunshot wounds, they were begging for him to get medical attention. They didn't allow that to happen. How dare you do that? Mr. Gilladi absolutely sat there cold uh, with no emotion. And after that, excused himself because he had a lot to do that day. That was the biggest betrayal because that was an Israeli who apparently got so greedy that he didn't want to lose his money-making opportunity by, a, by aligning himself with a bunch of mourning poor families. Let, let me ask you in the broader sense, uh, because now we're uh, in 2012, the London Games. Uh, how, uh, as a family member of the Munich 11, how do you account for the IOC's serial denial of a simple minute of silence when they've done it so often for others? At this point, all these years, I've always said it was an Israeli-Palestinian issue. At this point, um, it, it's nothing more than racism and anti-Semitism. Um, they had a memorial for the bombing in England, which is, I think, a wonderful thing. Um, every um, terrorist attack should be remembered, and um, we should all be against terrorism. But when you actually deny a terrorist attack, the first big terrorist attack that happened on a global basis. Uh, um, that's why 9-11 happened and the, you know, all these big attacks happened because it worked. When the Munich massacre happened and it was the first time that the Olympics uh, were broadcast worldwide on TV the way it was, it showed the, the terrorists one thing. If you take a big stage and you create a big terrorist attack, you'll get a lot of attention. And then you'll also have a lot of people that will decide whether it's politically correct for them or not to jump up and say whether that was a bad thing or, or, or a good thing. On the IOC, um, their history is, has shown that there's been a lot of um, anti-Semites in their ranks and Nazi sympathizers. And I think that it um, only has to do with anti-Semitism. 
Um, we were together, uh, we came together again a few days ago at the Memorial uh, Coliseum, Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum, the site of two games, 32 and 84, when 1984, when your mom and you as a little kid participated in the Wiesenthal Center's memorial. You, you chose uh, to read a quote uh, from Pastor uh, Niemöller. Why did you choose that quote? And can you recall those words uh, for us? Well, um, it, it basically, the, the whole message of that quote is telling people that if you stand on the sidelines and don't stand up for what's right because you're not a Catholic or you're not Jewish or you're not a, whatever it is that the, that group is being attacked for, you are giving power not only to the perpetrators, but you're also leaving yourself um, vulnerable for an attack and nobody to speak up for you. Because when people sit on the sidelines, as you see, it, terrorists started at first with, oh, it's just about Jews and Israelis. And people said, oh, let's forget about that. And then terrorists started doing it worldwide. Now it's Americans, now it's English, now it's Spain, now you know, now you also have it in Russia, in China, everywhere else in the world. Not only that, the terrorists also attack their own people. So when you don't stand up to terrorism, if you don't stand up for what's right, it will end up coming to your doorstep whether you like it or not. Last question, maybe the toughest, the very personal one. Um, you know, when you smile, you look exactly like your father, as uh, pictures. <laughs> What do you remember about your dad, and what do you want the rest of the world to know about him? Everything I know about my dad has been stories from people who have known him, met him, um, uh, were his athletes. Um, the one thing that I know about my dad is that there was no, nothing political about him. I mean, if anybody knows anything about athletes, so, you know, you ask him anything politically, they won't know. They're too busy working out and training. Um, he was funny, he loved his athletes, he loved all athletes. The one thing that athletes have in common is no matter where you're from, you adore what other athletes are able to accomplish with their bodies and their minds. And that is the one thing that delineates any uh, differences between people when it comes to sports. And that's what my dad absolutely loved about athletes. Um, he, he, it was not about where they were from, it was about what they were able to accomplish with their bodies and minds. And that's what I want people to know, that he was an athlete first, a father second, and a husband second as well. Guri Weinberg, um, a worthy son to the late Moshe Weinberg. He will not be forgotten. We look forward to hearing a lot more from you in the future. God bless. We'll see you soon. Thank you, Rabbi. Bye-bye.